Hi, I'm with Steve, the GM of the Kimpton Cottonwood. Uh, Steve, can you tell us a little bit about the hotel? Sure, yeah. Um, Charles Schimmel is the proprietor and developer of this property, and he built this property in 1916 um, and ran, ran it. Um, and he actually had a collection of four hotels, this being one of them. There was another one in Lincoln, um, the Corn Husker, and a couple other properties in Illinois. Uh, but this was his this was his home base and um, became the Grand Dam Hotel of Omaha back in the era of when Union Pacific Railroad was making treks uh, back and forth from the East Coast to the West Coast. Uh, it operated as a hotel up until the until the 80s uh, when it was converted into office space, and then it became uh, there was a flood in the basement uh, around 2016, and it became. Um, at that time, the main tenant moved out uh, and our current ownership uh, saw an opportunity to purchase the hotel and bring it back to its, uh, to its glory. One of the great things when they started to do the renovation and demo is this floor that we're actually here in the lobby. Um, when it was an office space, it was all beige carpet, um, but when they started doing the demo, they uncovered, it's like unwrapping a, a, a Christmas present, and they saw this great mosaic tile. So, it was very patchy, of course, but there was painstaking um, process where they matched the dye lot and were able to patch in to the original flooring. Same, same type of flooring they found over in the Orleans room, which was the fine dining restaurant back in the day, and is now more of like our living room and a three meal a day restaurant. So is that marble staircase behind us? That is a part of the original construction and was protected um, during the renovation. So this piece of uh, exposed brick is actually the, um, the end of the original building, um, the eight-story structure that was the old Blackstone, now the, the Kimpton Cottonwood Hotel. Everything beyond here was added on as part of the renovation. Including the courtyard out there, the hot tub. Yeah, so the courtyard out here is, is our uh, resort-style pool um, that is currently covered due to the season. Um, but you still got the hot tub out here. We still keep the hot tub open tw uh, 12 months out of the year. So we're now in the Gold Coast Ballroom, which is uh, a new addition to the property, and it has an air wall that will divide the space into two different rooms. Um, Gold Coast is um, named after the neighborhood, which was the, the area back in the day. Gold Coast meaning that the, there was the mansions and uh, large estates that were in this neighborhood. And was it always the Blackstone District? No, Blackstone District is named after the hotel. The original hotel name was called the Blackstone. And unfortunately, we couldn't call it the Blackstone again because there's a hotel in Chicago named the Blackstone as well. So now we're in the original ballroom, the historic ballroom that was a part of the original property. Um, this, this is a historic ballroom in a lot of different ways because it had several galas and weddings uh, for the local community. Um, it was also the space where Richard Nixon announced his presidency um, um, when he ran for, for president. Does Gerald Ford have any history in Nebraska? He does. He's from Nebraska, but um, nothing related. I'm sure he was here at one time, but nothing particular um, that, that I know of. And when we look out in this direction, what neighborhood are we looking at? Is this the Blackstone? So we're, the immediate area is kind of the Gold Coast area. If we look off to the left here, we're at the very edge of the Blackstone District. But if you look over here, um, this, all, this, all this development that took place um, on Farnham Street, and we have a new development that is being constructed right now, is the Blackstone District. So this is all residential and... Um, restaurants and bars and uh, other services as well. So we have Mutual of Omaha which is right here um, and then right in the foreground the tallest building is the First National Bank. And is uh, that relatively so. new? No it's been around for some time um, but Mutual of Omaha is moving downtown um, and it will be it will eclipse the First National Bank building. So welcome to the lower level of the hotel, which is the Cottonwood Room. Um, the Cottonwood Room, pretty much stitch for stitch, is what it looked like back in the, in the early 20s. One of the great things about this project is that the local community really embraced it. And one of the great stories I like to tell is that, uh, as an example of that, is when 
the owners were out um, talking about the project at a local restaurant and somebody overheard them and came to the table and they said, hey, are you the owners of the new, uh, the new Blackstone, the Cottonwood Hotel? And he said, As a matter of fact, we are. He said, I actually have the original Cottonwood Room sign in my garage. And he um, was graceful enough to offer the original sign so we can put it back in its original place. So this is our historic wall, which kind of details some of the history of the property that was both donated by local residents as well as the National Historic Society. Um, we have Kennedy here who actually made a stop in Omaha uh, and spent their fifth anniversary here. Um, this is a picture of a lady that did the hand-painted mural, which is uh, the Missouri River, but we have a now video wall of the same Missouri River as well. Um, that's actually uh, a video so you can see fish jump in there and birds fly by if you stare at it long enough. The great debate about Omaha versus New York is where the Reuben sandwich was invented and we have proof that it was actually uh, first sandwich ever served was at this hotel. Um, as the story goes, Charles Schimmel, who was the proprietor, um, had a poker match every Sunday and um, business people in town were a part of this poker match. And they nicknamed themselves the committee, which we fondly call our steakhouse now, the committee restaurant. Now it's starting to all come together for me. And so at one of these poker matches, um, Charles Schimmel asked his brother, who was the chef at the time, uh, Bernard, and this is a picture of Bernard. Um, hey, uh, Ruben Kolakowski has some fresh sauerkraut down in the old market where he had a warehouse. So Bernard went down, grabbed some sauerkraut and uh, corned beef and came back and made the Reuben sandwich with the, with the special dressing and served it at this poker match. The guys raved about it and they said, Charles, you gotta put this in your other three hotels, including this one being the fourth hotel, uh, which he did and it became such wildly uh, successful that the National Restaurant um, named it Sandwich of the Year in 1956. And that is when it became legendary and historic. Now is the version that I tried up in the Orleans room, is that the original version? So that is our, our modern take. I'm at the Orleans room and they have on the menu the Blackstone Reuben, which is a modern day version of what was invented here um, maybe a century ago. So as you can see, it's super thick. And this is probably what you would see in delis in cities like New York and other places. But if you look around menus here, you're gonna see it on a lot of them. So each one of these QR codes represents a different Reuben recipe. Yeah, so this is a picture of Bernard, um, Bernard Schimmel. It's not Warren Buffett, it's Bern uh, our, our other famous resident of Omaha. Um, but each one of these QR codes is a uh, recipe, a different recipe of because there's so many different versions of the Reuben. Um, unlike back in the original, we actually cure, cure that beef for six days, um, and um, as well as um, the sauerkraut is prepared a little bit differently. Instead of just being raw sauerkraut, uh, we actually cook it. Um, but other than that, it is, uh, the, the bread is locally made, um, and the sandwich is the basic sandwich that was originally served. Well, thank you very much for the tour. Appreciate it. I'm at the Committee Chop House, which is in the lower level of the Kimpton Cottonwood. On the menu here, I tried a couple of things. So I did not come here to try seafood, but my server suggested the seafood tower. All right, we have our beautiful seafood tower here. Those black tiger prawns, king crab, our house smoked clams, and then the Spanish style mussels. Those beautiful Prince Edward Island Osprey oysters on the bottom. Up top we have our scallop salad, our house-made steak sauce, both the mignettes. We have a pink peppercorn and saffron, as well as a citrus and ginger, and then a cocktail sauce for you. Enjoy. Um, Omaha, Midwest, beef, and I got the cowboy ribeye right here. So this is 20 ounces, and I'm trying it without any sauce. They do have sausage you could add on the side, but I'm not going to do that this time. Here's a piece of the cowboy ribeye. I ordered it medium. I'm glad 
I got it with no sauce. I don't think you need it necessarily. Um, whatever rub they're using on it, I could definitely taste some salt, pepper, and uh, maybe garlic, but I'm sure there's definitely more going on with it. Um, I thought that was uh, more than enough flavor. Obviously, it's the right steak, and I'm gonna finish the other 19 ounces like it is. For dessert, I'm having the baked Alaska. For this one, the server comes to your table, creates a nice little fire in the pot there, lights the top of the dessert on fire, and inside is sorbet. So now I'm at Coneflower Creamery in the Blackstone District, and I'm here to try the Blackstone Butter Brickle Ice Cream. And I'm told that this was also invented at the Kimpton Cottonwood, which used to be the Blackstone Hotel. So what this is, I believe, is it's sweet cream based ice cream with pieces of chocolate covered toffee. You can kind of see them. So it definitely has a little bit of crunch. It's not like uh, overwhelming with the toffee, but I can understand why it's popular. It's really good. And uh, my time here in Omaha in the Blackstone District has come to an end. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you like what you saw, please click subscribe. I'm going to be heading to Columbus, Ohio soon, Wilmington, Delaware. I got a lot more videos planned. So thank you very much for tuning in.